Hello, my name is Declan McCardle. I'm an equine specialist with Chagask, and I'm here today with my colleague Mark Plunkett, who's soil and nutrition specialist based in Johnstone Castle. And we're here today to discuss the importance of taking a soil sample, and how this information should be utilised with regards to our soil fertility programme. Mark, maybe just explain to us why it's important to take a soil sample. Okay, Declan, uh, soil testing is the first step in terms of managing soil fertility. It gives us a baseline as regards the, the soil nutrient status, whether it's very low, medium, or very, very high. This allows us to prepare a fertilizer plan and plan uh, lime application, organic manure applications, and fertilizer applications. In many respects, this can save the farmer money. If the soil fertility in certain areas are quite high, that will influence what the products you'll buy and potentially save money or could aid if the soil fertility is very low where grassland production is poor could help them maximise grass output. Correct. It, it literally gives farmer a farmer the information for their own field and how to manage um, both nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium as efficiently as possible. It will allow to target organic manures to fields that are low in fertility that come yeah. back on the cell test reports. It will also allow us to put a, a liming program in place and target different parts of the farm with lime to get us up to the optimum soil pH. But as I, as I say, getting the soil sample is probably the most important thing. It's very, very important to be organised and prepared. Like for example, what we use um, mainly in this country is a funnel type auger. Yeah. Um, it's a four inch core, it's uh, conical shaped, it's narrower in the base and wider in the top and this allows the soil to, to, to move up into the core and we must get a four inch core every time. Also it's important to have a, a soil mapping plan. So again I have mapped out the, the farm here in Johnstown to show us the areas that need to be soil sampled. So that's very very um, useful, so like we generally take a sample every two to four hectares. Also what we use Declan is we use soil sample boxes and again we label these appropriately with a black permanent mark. Very good. So just, you're very organised Mark, you see with your map here you've identified the different areas. I suppose have you a maximum set number of hectares per sample? Well generally we t we're, we're taking a sample every two to, f every two to four hectares and uh, they're, they're management blocks and again like we you know it's the way we manage them in terms of NP and K and uh, lime applications. So Mark if we look at this paddock here uh, and we can see the paddocks around us, they're, they're all divided. That's right. Um, so, can you explain, let's say, with your soil auger, how would you proceed with taking a sample from this field? Well, okay, well, first, Declan, we, we divide any unusual spots in the field yeah. around gateways, where maybe, um, you know, around headlands, where animals have congre congregated around ring feeders, drinking trucks, all those, any unusual spots are divided. Any because like slightly poster. Yes, yeah. I think that would give a, an, a, an abnormal result. So we're looking for a representative soil sample. That's very, very important. So we're staying well out in the field. Yeah. We will walk in a W-shaped pattern to get our representative sample, and we're taking five cores, five soil cores. This will be... Uh, dipped into the ground five times on each leg of the core and we recommend to take a minimum of 20 soil cores per soil sample so that would give us enough soil that will be delivered to the lab for analysis and then you mentioned about let's say, the box which we're going to send off to the lab am i correct in saying then you're going to take a random sample of those 20 cores yes to fill that box what we'll do, we'll take 20 cores, we will subsample our 20 cores, this box will hold about 15 cores, yeah. we'll fill the box um, completely, that will be sent off to the lab for analysis and we'll get our results back based so on this that. This highlights, particularly if you've got a big farm and you're getting a lot of size samples, that you clearly identify a mark, Yes. which paddock the sample is for. Yes. Uh, That's why it's very important that say you have the map there that you know we'll have the, the the samples will be numbered and also we'll have a field name for each field as well. So when the information comes back, that the farmer and yourself can relay it, you know, to what parts of the farm it is, and that is very very important that you have a plan or a numbering system in place there. And as you just go back to the soil auger, you mentioned this is a fun. It's very important that you, you actually go down the same amount. Yes, um, soil sampling depth is very, very important, Declan. As I say, we're looking for a good core each time. We're looking for a four inch core. So we're looking for 20 of these into the soil core. That's going to give us a, a good um, um, guide as regards yeah. nutrient value. It's most important as regards phosphorus because phosphorus tends to be in a tough few centimetres of the soil. Mm -hmm. If we take shallow soil cores, like yeah. maybe if the soil is too, 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 uh, too very, very wet or too dry, then we will get a false reading for phosphorus. So it's very, very important that you get the full four inch core every time because we are basing our advice for the next three to five years on this soil sample. Very good. And I suppose, Mark, what is the optimum time to take a soil sample within the year? The optimum time is generally September to March. 
like we generally like to have a minimum of three to four three three four months since our last application of say fertilizer or farmyard manure so like you know now is a good time to get soil samples taken because we're we're somewhere in the region of four or five months since fertilizer was last spread on this paddock in terms of lime we like to have two years between sampling and the application of lime also, Declan, it's important to gather details on the sample, for example, the farming system, the, the soil sample number, the field name, the soil type, the crop to be fertilised, the previous crop, the farm stocking rate, also if there's any manures being applied, like for example the type of manure, whether it's slurry or farmyard manure, and also the application rate. So all this information will help us to give you better and more reliable nutrient advice.